Hey everyone, this is a special episode of Behind the Curtain. In honor of Toy Story 4 coming out this Friday, I have teamed up with some other YouTubers to create Pixar Perception. All of us have picked our favorite Pixar movies to analyze, and you can watch the other videos in the playlist. I'll have the link down below. And you can make a video too. Pick a scene from your favorite Pixar movie, use the hashtag Pixar Perception and tag Network1901, and then you'll be added to the playlist. If you're new to my channel, instead of giving my own theories on film, I shape my videos around what the creators themselves have to say. Now let's get this video started. I think at the heart of it always is the story. Right. And that was something that John Lasseter understood from the very beginning was, mm -hmm. look, we could have the most amazing, groundbreaking visuals and animation and everything, but if we don't have a good story, then seven minutes people are going to walk out of the theater. Bob Peterson, who is co-writer and, and co-director, mm -hmm. he and I just always thought it would be fun to do something with a grouchy old man, somebody with a lot of attitude and personality, you know, <laughs> this guy who would have an opinion, like my grandfather did, you know, mm -hmm. he would tell you whether you, it was a popular thing or not, he would tell you what he thought. You know, and mm -hmm. that's the way Carl is. And we wanted to have a real change that happens to him, that by mm -hmm. the end, he's not shut in and boxed in his little house. He's now stretching out and connecting with people around him again. Mm -hmm. um, that's really the message of the film, if you will. The relationship we have with other people um, is really what makes life worth living. Carl's doing this weird thing of dragging his house across the world. Why? Right. It's gotta be a pretty strong reason. and. Uh, we hit on this idea of adventure as being either something you travel to and reach out for mm -hmm. or it's something more personal and inside and that mm -hmm. was the spine of the film. Yeah, we had the idea that Carl would lose his first family and his wife passes away. He goes off to do something that she wanted to complete and then we give him a new family and then it just was up to Carl to accept them or not. And then that was basically the why he could take in the second act. He could either go along on this false quest to the falls or start accepting new people in, into his lives, which is what Ellie would have wanted anyway. That might sound boring, but I think the boring stuff is the stuff I remember the most. All your surrounding characters, your side characters, have to magnify or put your main character in contrast. Also, have to push them forward along this journey, or, or you don't need them at all. Each side character has an empty quest that they're going on, but they act as kind of mentors for Carl. When Russell says, you know, it's the, it's the boring things I remember, he's talking about his empty quest with his father, but it's also something that goes into Carl's head and helps him push him along. So and then thereafter, what happens is we screen it, Everybody who we invited comes up to a, a room and tells us what they liked, what they didn't like, and we then, the creative team, kind of the core creative team goes away and says, what do you guys think, what, what should we, uh, how do we want to change this and adjust? And then we do that whole thing all over again. Mm. And we do it about seven or eight times before the film is really ready to produce. Russell, if you don't hurry up, the tigers will eat you. And those tigers in South America. Zoology. Well, that was one of the great pleasures for me in working on Toy Story and the success of Toy Story was that I got to meet these heroes of mine, like Frank Thomas and Joe Grant, right. as you mentioned. One thing he always, more than once, would mention is, what are you giving the audience to take home? Right. And that always kind of puzzled me at first, but as we talked about it, I realized what he meant was, okay, there's all the fun of bright colors and movement, but what the next day or in two months are people gonna think about that is in your film? The more particular and specific you are in the storytelling, the more generally it applies. Right. If you try to generalize, then nobody really gets anything. But if you're very specific and, and personal about it, um, it seems to resonate more. Story is kind of the way we speak. I think it's why we go to the movies. You know, it's why we listen to stories because you want these bigger questions. And, and in a way, I think the interesting ones are unanswerable, you know, right. when they're really difficult um, and there's no quite 100% satisfactory ending yeah. or answer to it. Well, we knew we needed something for the audience to be on board with Carl's journey. You know, he goes on this really pretty wild, fantastic thing of floating his house down to South America. And so uh, you really need to be on board with that emotionally, not just intellectually. And so Bob wrote this scene, which initially was a series of small 
very short scenes of little snippets of the two of them uh, discussing what they're going to have for dinner or fixing the car or whatever, little scenes. And then we gave it to Ronnie Del Carmen, who is our head of story, who boarded it. And I think initially he boarded it just the way we wrote it. But I remember him saying something about, you know, this would play really great with no dialogue. And uh, we eventually tried that. And once we did, we, we just went all the way. Let's take all sound effects out and nothing but just music. And to me, it sort of brought to mind a lot of us grew up with our parents taking home movies of us, you know, Super 8 movies. And there's something very emotional about watching those. And all you hear is the flicker of the projector. And you're sort of drawn in trying to imagine what, what's mom talking about there? And, you know, what happened right after that when dad cut? And so it was kind of a fe- that feeling that we were trying to get. You know, we, we did skew very sort of emotional and we did skew toward... Uh, toward the farcical and for me it was partly because Carl was going on a journey that a little girl had conjured in her younger days she wanted to go to this this place and uh in paradise falls and you know talking dogs and 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 giant birds you know they sort of are a little girl's uh fantasy Uh, and that's one thing that I always kind of liked about that but you know, I, I do. I do think we did keep the emotional alive. We were, after Ellie passed away, we try to think what talismans we could keep to make it feel like she was there, almost guiding this. And so, the symbolism of the house, her picture, the adventure book, uh, the grape, uh, the, you know, the grape soda, uh, it all sort of kept her alive. And then that's my favorite thing: that adventure book, the fact that it means her sort of quest for adventure at the beginning, but then at the very end, it's her. Um, giving him wisdom of what he can do with his life. That same object does two different things. I, I really love that. We discovered early on that the story we were telling was basically about what real adventure in life is and you know how so often we think of adventure as travel to exotic places and seeing fantastic creatures and sights that no one else has seen and and really what Carl comes to discover is that the thing that adventure really is is this wonderful relationship that he had with his wife and so even though he not he never got the former he he definitely had the the latter and uh, we needed to show that in the movie hey everyone thanks for watching If you're an aspiring screenwriter, I have something really cool for you. So my friend Tyler Mowry has created a Facebook group specifically for screenwriters. In this group, we brainstorm ideas, we give and receive feedback, and we learn about the writing process together. It's extremely beneficial and it's completely free. So I highly recommend that you join it. I'm a moderator over there, so I will see you there. As always, if you have a film or TV show that you'd like me to make a video on, just comment it down below. I'll see you guys next week as we take another look behind the curtain.